Hi guys, Twitch here from Creep Designs. Working on a couple of smaller things for now. Uh, one of which is Christmas trays. So Santa snack trays for um, milk and cookies and carrots for the reindeer. Or, you know, whiskey, brownies, whatever you want to put on it. So I'm making these out of timber fence panels that I have commandeered from my mother's deck which is getting ripped down anyway to be replaced with a new one she busted me taking them off of there and kicked up a bit of a stink but you know they were coming down anyway so why not make use of them so here is me making Santa snack trays Uh, it's really noisy here today, so I'll apologise now for all of the background noise. Um, so, like I said, I'm using fence palings, not panels, off these. It's kind of off the side of Mum's house. It's a weird setup the way the previous owners built it. Uh, but yeah, I've used three lengths to do all of these trays. You obviously don't need to do five. Um, but I've done five of these so I can do different styles and sell them. One of them I'll be keeping for my son to use. So I'm making these, I think they are 35 centimeters long, uh, which is big enough for the stencil and with a bit of room on either end for handles. Also cutting shorter pieces to put on either end of the tray on the underside to attach it all together. I'm using my Cartamelli PrepMate 2 sander with the uh, foam interface pad attached to give all of these a little bit of a sand. We're going rustic so I'm not sanding everything super smooth and not sanding off the old finish. If you want to check out this sander I'll put a link in the description to a video where I demonstrate and talk about this sander. I'm now lining up the backing pieces right up to the end so that I can make sure that the handle go handles go right through both all the pieces. I did start off only putting two screws in the corners of each end but because of the warping in the main timber panels I decided to put four screws in each part at the end. I probably could have gotten away with staining these all the one colour or just leaving them as is, but with how many options Cartamelli have in stains, I wanted to do all of them a different colour. So I'm starting off with ice. Make sure you give your stains a really good shake before you use them, because uh, ingredients tend to settle to the bottom. I'm using, I think it was a sleek... 38mm brush, I could be wrong, probably am. So, so whenever I'm doing literally anything, furniture, decor pieces, painting, staining, whatever, I always start on the underside, that way when I'm flipping it over to do the other parts, if anything does get damaged or get anything stuck to it, it's on the underside, it's not going to matter. And then if there's also brush strokes or run marks or anything like that, it's on the underside and then I can clean up the top part of it and like sand any run marks or anything off. You know, you understand, it makes sense. I'm just gonna keep rambling forever and ever. Anyway, brushing the stain on, wiping it off, 
um, it goes on perfectly smooth it's absolutely beautiful self-sealing um, and you can also go in with another coat or as many coats as you want to darken it or in this case lighten it anyway it makes the stain stronger and richer and more beautiful I did in fact end up going in with a second coat of this stain because it's so beautiful and I love it so much This time I'm using, I think it was driftwood. Pretty sure it's driftwood. Same deal, brush it on and then wipe it off. This time I'm using coal, which is a black stain already did the underside of these I figure you don't need to see the underside every time you get the gist but this way you get to see all the different stains well not all of them you get to see a few of the different stains on the same color of timber and get a feel for it so on this one I only did one coat of coal and when I wipe it back you'll see a lot of the brown still shows through it's really nice um, I like that stain so much that I did a second one and in the time that it took me to do this second one, which I only did one coat on, I grabbed the first one and ended up going in with the second coat just to darken one of them up more. So whilst we're here, Cartamelli washed away stains are water-based with a built-in matte sealer, very low VOC, and you can wash them out, wash it out of your brush or sponge with warm soapy water. They are super easy to use, just like the paint. And if you decide you don't like the stain that you've put on there, they don't soak deeply into the wood like some other water-based stains do. So it's really easy to just sand it back and start again. So I forgot to hit record whilst I was doing this one, but the gist of this is I used uh, Cartsamilli Boutique Mineral Paint in the colour Chelsea Cream, brushed it on and then scraped it off with a plastic scraper. So here you can see one coat of coal, two coats of coal, ice, driftwood and Chelsea cream. So now I'm going to use these stencils that were made for me especially by Carolyn at Gemini Creative. I do have another one, another couple like this except we had a storm the other night and all of my stuff got blown around my workshop and I can't find them. So I'm using these two today and I'm going to start with this one and stick it down with a couple of pieces of sleek tape from Sleek Brushes Australia. Again, the link will be in the description for both the stencils and the sleek tape. So I'm using Chelsea Cream to do this stencil. I've literally just poured some onto the table because I was being lazy. And I'm using a stenciling brush, putting a very small amount of paint on the brush dabbing off the excess on the table and then using a stippling, very light stippling motion to put the apply the paint onto the stencil. Don't feel tempted to put heaps of paint on there and to overdo it or overwork it or do a brushing motion because that's when you'll get paint bleeding underneath the stencil. If you do it in this, mo uh, in this manner and just do a slow stippling motion with very little paint you shouldn't get bleed bleed under the stencil I got there in the end um, if you're not if you don't feel like there's enough paint on there just wait for it to dry and then go over it again
So this is a perfect example. I was getting tired, got impatient and used a bit of a brushing motion instead on parts of it. And I did get a bit of bleed, paint bleed under the stencil. That was entirely my fault with my impatience. So this time I'm using pine trees in the Cartsamelli Boutique mineral paint range. Whilst we're at this point, I'm just going to point out there is absolutely no need to wash your stencils, especially not in between stenciling things. As long as the paint is dry, you shouldn't have a problem. Um, I was washing my stencils for a while, but I got lazy. So now I'm using Cartsamelli Black Bear in Boutique Mineral Paints. Probably one of the colours I use the most. So for the handles, I'm using these ones from Bunnings. I can't remember how much they were, sorry, but I'll put the link in the description for these. So to measure for these handles, I'm going two centimeters in from the edge. Then marking my line between those two points. Then I'll find the center of the entire piece. And then measure the length, the distance between the holes for the handle. <laughs> Then I'll divide that length in two and measure from the centre line on the board to get the full length of the handle dead centre. I really hope all of that made sense. When selecting my drill bit for the screws for handles, um, I always go slightly larger than the screw. There is no need for it to be absolutely full on tight, because once you tighten the handle, it's not going anywhere. Don't forget to countersink for your screws so that the screw head isn't sticking out. So the screws for these handles are far too long and they are snap off screws. I know everyone hates them but there is an easy way to snap these off. Uh, you can't see me doing it here because I did it out of shot but I'll put a link in the description for a video where I show how I snap them off the easy way. I 
accidentally got some paint on these ones whilst fitting the handle, so this one will be my son's. I could have left them all black, but I decided to do the ne next ones with some rub and buff in gold leaf. I started rubbing it on with my finger, but it was taking forever, so I changed to my stencil brush and it gave it a bit more of a brushed brass look, which I think suits the rustic look. Looking good. How good does that brushed brass look with that stain? That is the ice stain. It is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm spraying the last set of handles using Krylon shortcuts in the colour Gold Leaf. I only had three sets of handles so for the last two trays I'm using some tartan ribbon and drilling, some, marking up and drilling some holes for the ribbon to go through. Um, also going to countersink these ones so that the knot on the ribbon has somewhere to hide. The knife I'm using is from Sleep Brushes Australia. You can also find the link for that in the description. Now watch me very awkwardly tie a knot in this ribbon with my dodgy hand. I got there. Once I got done tying all the knots on both handles, uh, just to stop it from pulling through accidentally, I used some liquid nails on the back where, the, where it's countersunk, just so that it will dry and help stop it from pulling through. So thanks so much for watching guys, I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think in the comments, I absolutely love them, um, hope some kids will too. Uh, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss anything and check out the description for any links to any products that you might be interested in. Uh, thanks again and see you next time.